What's up? Today we're going to talk about how to get into Dartmouth College, which is a member of the esteemed Ivy League. Tip number one is look at the statistics. The statistics show that applying early decision to Dartmouth makes a heck of a lot of sense if you can swing it. Early decision, their latest early decision acceptance rate at, at Dartmouth was an astounding 20%, uh, whereas their latest regular decision acceptance rate was an astounding 5%. I'm rounding a little bit, but basically that's that's a huge spread. That's basically you have a four times higher chance statistically of getting into Dartmouth if you apply your early decision as opposed to regular decision. So seriously consider applying early decision to Dartmouth, which is a school that really rewards those students who can get their act together early with strong applications. But if you don't put together a strong application, you have no chance of getting in early decision. But the rest of this video is going to talk about how you have the best shot of pulling together a strong application, regardless of if you apply early decision or regular decision. So my next tip is below this article, below this video, excuse me, is a link to my article, How to Get into the Ivy League Ethically. It's located over at the website admissions.blog. It's also linked again directly below this video. Read that article carefully, particularly if you're an underclassman in high school, because that's going to give you a lot of the tools and foundation you need in order to enter your senior year as the most competitive applicant possible to really knock the socks off the application readers at a school like Dartmouth. My next tip is about the application itself. Once you find yourself on the Dartmouth application for admission, uh, you will note that on the supplement to the Common App, Dartmouth allows you to actually upload an extracurricular resume to that supplement. Sadly, some very accomplished students will skip doing just that. They will skip uploading an extracurricular resume to the supplement. That is a huge mistake. It's like a, a gimme there. You know, like you want to take advantage of any opportunity to further differentiate yourself. And the fact that you might skip that is a travesty to me. Many students will rationalize that decision to skip uploading an extracurricular resume on the supplement of a Dartmouth application by saying, well, I filled out the activities page on the common portion of the Common App, so I don't need to say it again. Well, you should want to say it again because you're going to have so much more space on an extracurricular resume upload than you ever could have had on that activities page of the common por on the common portion of the Common App. Uh, if you're asking yourself, well, I wouldn't know how to begin putting together an extracurricular resume, Craig, so uh, how do I do that? Well, I have just the ticket for you. Below this video is a link to my very short course, it's under an hour in length, which is named How to Build an Extraordinary Extracurricular Resume. Take that course and you will learn, regardless of your background extracurricular-wise, how to develop a strong extracurricular resume structurally, detail-wise, so that you're going to be able to upload a document that you will be proud to upload to the Dartmouth Supplement, and it's going to help differentiate your extracurricular output over your high school career in a way that that activities page on the common portion of the Common App would never be able to do. And so that's going to further impress the Dartmouth application readers uh, once it comes time for your application to be reviewed. My next tip gets even deeper granularly into the actual supplement to uh, the common application for Dartmouth. Remember, on the supplement, all these questions are going directly and only to Dartmouth. Uh, so one of the things that I've noted in the Dartmouth supplement here in the year 2022 is that right on the first page, uh, they give you another opportunity to further differentiate yourself when they say that students who wish to demonstrate a remarkable talent in the arts have the option to submit a portfolio of their work for faculty review in up to two artistic disciplines. If you wish to do so, please select your preferred form of artistic expression. Instructions on how to submit your portfolio will be added to your application portal once we process your admissions application. Uh, so that, you, that would be uploading it on the Dartmouth-specific portal once your uh, Common App has been submitted and processed. For more detailed information, review these instructions. But you can do so for dance, you can do so for music, you can do so for studio art, and you can do so for theater. Um, so if you are any of those types of students who, who may dabble or deeper in those areas, seriously consider putting together uh, some sort of portfolio. 
Because again, I'm a big believer that you want to take every opportunity available to you to further differentiate yourself. Also located on that first page of Dartmouth Supplement is a question about gender. And, uh, you know, regardless of what you think about gender, uh, the fact of the matter is when a college is asking on the first page of its supplement about gender and they're giving you the opportunity to identify as agender, demigender, gender queer, man, non-binary, questioning, trans man, trans woman, two-spirit, woman, all of the above, prefer not to answer or other, it's no secret why more and more people are identifying as something other than male or female. So the very fact that that is a required question to respond to, yes, you can prefer not to answer or you can say other, but you must put something and they give you that diversity of options, certainly leaves the reader of the application with the impression that uh, Dartmouth wants to diversify uh, the genders it can and will be able to report uh, in the next census that they conduct. I will leave that portion of my talk at that. The next portion of the application that I want to talk about is the writing supplement itself. The, writings, or the writing supplement itself is, um, you know, very hard. I would actually argue that Dartmouth's writing supplement is the hardest out there right now. Um, it is a very selective school to get into, and its supplement doesn't give you much room to run with any of the three questions that you need to answer. And so it's hard to sort of craft or conceptualize how to craft a cohesive argument or brand, if you will, or frame your sort of self in the supplement because right when you're getting sort of into it, you have to stop one response and go on to the next one. Uh, so there is a 100 word response, there's a 250 word response, and there's also another 250 word response. Let's go through them and I'll talk about them actually all together because I have a strategy for how I would approach these. Uh, but I'm not going to tell you until we go through each of the questions. Uh, or at least two of the three questions, the two required ones first. The first question that you have 100 words with which to respond. Dartmouth celebrates the ways in which its profound sense of place informs its profound sense of purpose. As you seek admission to Dartmouth's class of 2027, what aspects of the college's academic program, community, or campus environment attract your interest? In short, why Dartmouth? You only have 100 words to respond to that, which is painful for me to say, because you know I could help you put together a 650 word response, and I help students do that all the time for Cornell or a 550 word response for a school like Michigan or something. But for for Dartmouth, they give you 100 words. So you may be very sad to hear that, but just hold on because I have a strategy I want you to employ in just a minute. The next question is: Please respond in up to 250 words. Be yourself, Oscar Wilde advised. Everyone else is taken. Introduce yourself in 200 to 250 words. Again, that is a hard response to respond to in only 250 words because you're 17 years old minimum probably and you probably have a lot you would want to share about yourself. You only have 250 words there. And then the final question gives you an option of responding to uh, one of five different questions. Um, I'm not going to read all of them right now, but my favorite of those five different questions, they're all uh, listed below this video, but the, my favorite is what excites you? Uh, and really the other questions, even though they're much wordier, uh, they're basically all asking you questions that are sort of forward looking, like what do you wonder and think about? Or how does uh, this quote from James Baldwin regarding um, challenges faced or you know how you have to face a challenge how does this apply to your life experiences you can definitely frame that in uh, the future tense and not just the past what drives you to create and what do you hope to make or have you made and then the other one I'm just again sort of summarizing it is uh, in what ways do you hope to make or are you making an impact so I want to focus on what excites you because in in all the other cases, it's sort of like a similar type of question. Um, they want to get more an idea about sort of what makes you tick, what are you passionate about, uh, show us, tell us that story, and you have 250 words with which to respond. My strategy with these three essays 
is maybe controversial, but I'm going to just say it anyway. I want you to treat them as one essay that's just organized in a very structured way. So what do I mean by that? I mean that for the first response, the Why Dartmouth one, I want you to treat that more like a thesis that you would write in a 650-word essay, like a thesis statement as a part of an introduction paragraph, where you are just basically very quickly summarizing the things or thing that is really attracting you to Dartmouth and be as specific as possible in the, in the context of knowing you have 100 words. Um, so uh, you can't really give too much showing detail or supporting evidence in a 100-worder, but I would definitely treat that sort of as, as the uh, appetizer, if you will, to the rest of what's coming next. Uh, you're not going to be able to give details about this class you want to take or this institute you want to do research at or this particular summer abroad program or this particular professor who you're dying to meet uh, or this particular, uh, you know, club that you want to become the president of. You can't get into that much granularity there, um, but you can talk uh, sort of at a 36,000 foot level about the two to four really compelling aspects of Dartmouth. And of course, they're sort of giving you a hint that the place is important too, the actual physical environment. So place-based place -based education is like a trend, you know, and um, they they want you to like the idea of studying in Hanover, New Hampshire and on a more rural campus uh, than you would find at any of the other Ivy League schools. So that's something that definitely not to discount, but basically treat this res response like almost like a appetizer to the next two responses, because you will get to say more about yourself and your motivations. Uh, but this one is firmly focused on what you find attractive in Dartmouth. It's like a little 100 word love note. The next essay where they're asking you to be yourself, Oscar Wilde, Wilde advised, everyone else is taken, introduce yourself in 200 to 250 words. That's what I would treat as sort of the first body paragraph of this overall sort of three essay essay, um, where you are now describing where you're coming from um, so that they can understand why you were attracted to the summary of things you just provided about Dartmouth in the first essay. So this is going to sort of connect the dots between, uh, you know, let's say you said you were really interested in studying economics at Dartmouth and um, taking part in a particular tradition at Dartmouth. This essay is now going to show why that is believable and authentic, because you're, what you're going to focus on in this essay is the value system that you bring to Dartmouth, uh, which is going to then set the table for the last essay, uh, which is hopefully I encourage you to respond to the one that is what excites you, because I think that's the most straightforward and the least distracting. Um, but even if you did, what do you wonder and think about or... Uh, in what ways do you hope to make or are you making an impact? That's where it comes full circle. That's where you're looking forward. And you're actually going to be able to give yourself more running room to show yourself excitingly making an impact on Dartmouth's campus and then in your life post-Dartmouth. Uh, and so that's why I want you to sort of conceptualize these three essays as one big essay, because the first essay is sort of setting the table, introducing why you're in love with Dartmouth. Uh, all The spotlight is all on Dartmouth. The next essay, the spotlight is all on you, your value system, what makes you tick, you know, get, really introduce yourself intimately from the perspective of ideally uh, your sort of academic slash professional passions, if you will, um, but also just your your core character if you want to go there and you feel like that bolsters your case for why you want to study at Dartmouth. And then in the last essay, you know, if you did the one that says what excites you or the one that asks uh, in what ways do you hope to make or are you making an impact, that's where you can actually show yourself, like I said, excitingly or impressively impacting the life of Dartmouth and that's where you can start showing yourself joining a club, starting a club, uh, particularly augmenting your education by engaging with a particular professor in research or pursuing a unique summer program or summer term program at Dartmouth. You know, 
uh, that's where you can really show that. But then also you want to go even further than post-graduation. What are you going to be doing? And how are you going to be impacting the world in an exciting way? Let's say if you've responded to the What Excites You one, that will um, be easily traceable back to that, that you would not be able to do it if you did not go to Dartmouth. So the word Dartmouth can and should show up in your third essay in the supplement to Dartmouth College. Even though the question is what excites you and you don't think it's a Why Dartmouth essay, in some ways it's the conclusion of the Why Dartmouth essay, the 100 worder that starts out the supplement. Uh, and the middle essay is more sort of just the background story that would make it believable that um, you would be as interested in the exciting things that you are excited about to do in the future. So hopefully it's your future that's exciting you and you can show with words uh, a compelling story of you actually engaging and taking advantage of all that Dartmouth has to offer and then taking that even further and running with it, carrying the baton further into the life that you hope to lead after Dartmouth um, and, and really connect the dots with how Dartmouth uniquely will get you there. That is the approach I would take, and that is extremely hard to do because these are not perfect fits for one why Dartmouth essay, but I think that, that if you treat them as such, as different uh, structural parts of the same essay, you're going to at least feel really confident when you put this supplement to bed that you have uh, you've given the picture you need to give of your full rationale for wanting to go to Dartmouth. You've set the table and summarized it, sort of like an abstract in the beginning. Then, that's the first essay, then you've told the backstory of your life, your value system, your character, what, you know, what motivates you in many ways. And then the last essay, again, if you chose, like said, let's say, what excites you, or think and wonder, wonder and think, what do you wonder and think about? Well, I'm so hoping that's your future. And again, show what that would look like on Dartmouth's campus and beyond. Um, and that's where you can really get into the nitty gritty supporting details for the, the thesis, basically, that you were able to provide in the 100 words to start. So I know this is one of my more unique videos in the sense that I'm telling you to do something that you probably didn't think of. You probably just wanted to treat these three essays as three different essays. Um, but I feel like that would leave too many gaps. Um, and as a result, I think that you should definitely treat it as one essay um, that just compartmentalizes different elements of your story in different writing fields. Uh, with that said, there are other tips and tricks I can give you. One of the most notable, of course, is if you have uh, family members who've gone to Dartmouth or are going to Dartmouth or work at Dartmouth, make sure you don't rush through the question that uh, asks you to name those people, especially if they're very close relatives um, or contacts who live there. Um, or, or the people who got you involved with, well, they don't actually ask the names of the people who got you involved with uh, Dartmouth or got you interested in it, but they do ask, you know, what ways have you connected with Dartmouth? You should definitely take the time to respond to those questions. Don't rush through those. That's important too. But when we think about the most stressful element of the uh, Dartmouth application beyond the Common App essay, which I have many videos for that, um, for, for the actual most stressful Dartmouth specific part, it's the supplement. And so we just covered that, I think, in good enough depth for you to understand that this is a hard supplement. Give yourself props for completing it once you do it, no matter how you do it. Uh, because even though none of the word lengths of these three essays is that long, that actually is what makes it harder. Uh, because you, you really have to think strategically about how by the end of those three essays, you are going to have made the case that you are a compelling applicant for Dartmouth and that Dartmouth is a compelling fit for you. And if you can keep that sort of as your guiding light, I think you are going to give yourself the very best shot of earning admission to this very awesome school up in Hanover, New Hampshire. If you want to learn more about me and receive my one-on-one -on -one college admissions coaching services, you can and should visit collegemeister.com. If you like this video, definitely give it a thumbs up below. And also, if you like this video and you are applying to other colleges and want to learn about how to get into those, you probably want to subscribe to my channel because I'll be doing some more of these and other videos related to the very fun, very exciting, always changing college application process in the United States of America. Until next time, my name is Craig Meister, the College Meister. Stay safe, stay well, and I wish you the very best of luck as you apply to Dartmouth College.